All right, so these are the target three and four notes. And today we'll be doing the evaluating the discriminant of a quadratic and kind of determining what that means exactly. So we'll start with target three. Um, then target four is the quadratic formula to solve. Um, so target three, to find the discriminant, we use um, this formula. Now, um, basically, in this quadratics unit, we're going to be solving one of the methods we're going to be using is the quadratic formula. And before we can even solve a problem, one of the good ways to kind of approach it is to know exactly how many solutions and what kind of solutions we're going to have before we even do the problem. And there's a way for us to figure that out before we even start solving. And that's really cool because we can check our work that way. So target three, I can evaluate the discriminant and determine the meaning. So to find the discriminant, we use this formula. B squared minus 4AC. And you might be thinking, well, what is B? What is A? What is C? Well, in a quadratic, a quadratic looks like this. Y equals AX squared plus BX plus C. So that A value is the number right in front of the x squared value. Sometimes it's 1. If you don't see a number, that just means 1. The b value is the number right in the middle attached to that x value. So it's the coefficient, the linear coefficient in the middle there. Sometimes there's no linear value. And then the c value is the constant at the end. So it's just some number tacked on. It could be plus or minus. And it's just one number. And we also might not have a c value. So let's just go ahead and get started. Um, we're going to use that formula and plug in the numbers and kind of see what that means. So it says we can predict how many solutions we have based on the discriminant value. So using the quadratic and the values that we have, if we go ahead and solve for that discriminant, so we plug in a value for B, we plug in a value for A, and we plug in a value for C, if the answer to that is greater than zero, so I'm right here, if that answer is greater than zero, which means if it's positive, that means that we have two real solutions. Two real solutions. So if we find out that our discriminant is positive, we know exactly how many solutions we're going to have and what type they are. We have two, and they're both real. And we'll kind of explain what that means a little bit later in the notes. Um, the middle um, case, it says b squared minus 4ac, or our discriminant, equals 0. So if it just equals 0 and we do that math, we get an answer of 0. We have one real solution. One real solution. And then finally, if our discriminant is less than 0 or negative, That means that we have two imaginary solutions. Two imaginary solutions. And we kind of already know what imaginary means. If we're solving um, a problem and we get a negative under the radical or the square root symbol, we know that we're going to have to pull out an i value and that means imaginary. So as we're doing this, if we get a negative value for our discriminant, that means the answer to our, our quadratic is going to be two, two imaginary solutions. Now graphically, we need to figure out what this means. So if we have two real solutions based on our discriminant, that means that roughly our parabola does this. And I'm going to write our parabola, dot, dot, dot. And I'm going to show you what each case does to the parabola. So if our discriminant is positive and we have two real solutions, our parabola could look one of two ways. It could possibly look like this, where it crosses the x-axis in two places, here and here. Or it could possibly look like this, just upside down. Now it's still crossing the x-axis in two places. 
So the only restriction there is that if we have two real solutions, that means that our parabola crosses the x-axis in two places. Crosses x-axis twice. If our discriminant is zero and we have one real solution, that means that our Quad, our parabola looks like this. It's going to cross only at one place. Now, when I say cross, I really mean just hits. It's only going to touch our x-axis in one place. So we could have that, or we could have the upside-down version, where just the very top of our parabola is going to hit that x-axis. So in this case, it hits the x-axis and then finally, if we have a negative value for our discriminant, which means we have two imaginary solutions, that means that our parabola looks like this. It's kind of just floating, and it never touches the x-axis. Or we could have the negative version down here, upside down. So if our parabola looks like that, one of those two ways, that means we have two imaginary solutions, we could also come to that conclusion about our graph based on our discriminant value. So this means it does not cross the x-axis. All right, so it says use the discriminant to find how many solutions and what type of solutions the following equation will have. So what I'm going to do first is just kind of look at my equation and determine my a, b, and c values. So don't forget our quadratic is going to look like this. a, x squared plus b, x plus c. That's our standard form of our quadratic. So I can see the very first term in my quadratic there in my equation is x squared. Now technically there is a 1 right in front of that x squared, so my a value here is 1. My b value is 2, and then my c value is also 2. Now you have to be careful of the signs here as well. If I had a negative or a minus sign attached to any one of those numbers, it would be a negative number. But since I had pluses all the way across the board, it was positive. All right, so now what I'm going to do is plug those a, b, and c values into my discriminant formula which is, I'll write it over here, whoops, b squared minus 4ac, don't forget that. So b squared minus 4ac, I'm going to plug in my b and my a and my c. Alright, so b squared, b2 squared, minus 4 times my a value, which is 1, times my c value, which is 2. Now if I simplify this down, I get 4 minus 4 times 1 times 2 gives me 8, and I get negative 4 as my actual answer. Alright, so my discriminant is negative. Now, kind of scrolling back up, looking back up at the top of my notes where it says predicting how many solutions based on the discriminant value, if I got a negative for my discriminant, that means I have two imaginary solutions. So how many solutions? Two. What type? They're imaginary. All right, let's move on to the next one. x squared minus 6x plus 9. My a value is 1. My b value is negative 6. And my c value is 9. So plugging that into my b squared minus 4ac, I'm going to square negative 6 minus 4 times my a value times my c value. And I'm just getting those right from that a, b, c right there. So negative 6 squared gives me 36, and then 4 times 9 also gives me 36. So when I actually do that math, I get 0. And that's one of my possibilities. When I get 0 as an answer, that means I have one real solution. I only have one solution and it's real, which means I don't have I in the answer. Let's do a couple more. 
x squared minus 6x plus 10. My a value is 1, b is negative 6, and c is 10. So, b squared minus 4ac. I'm taking my b value and squaring it. Minus 4 times a times c. So I get 36 minus 40, and I get a negative 4 is my answer there. That means I have two imaginary solutions. Because I got a negative for my discriminant. And then I'm going to go ahead and do this last one in blue. Let's see, x squared minus 5x plus 5. So my a value is 1, my b value is negative 5, and my c value is positive 5. So b squared minus 4ac. So just plugging in those values. I get 25 minus 20, which is a positive 5 which means I have two real solutions. Which means both of my solutions do not have an I value. They're just normal numbers. All right, that's target three. Let's move on to target four. I can use the quadratic formula to solve a quadratic, including imaginary and complex solutions. So we're actually going to be bringing in our simplifying radicals tool in this lesson. Um, so. Let's see, let's get started. They give us the quadratic formula right there. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. And we get those a, b, and c values just from looking at our equation that we're given. So what I'm going to do first in this very first problem is I'm going to determine how many and what type of solutions I'm going to have before I even start. And I'm actually going to do that based off of target three, what we just did. So I'm going to look at this. Don't forget, our discriminant is b squared minus 4ac. And if you notice, that b squared minus 4ac is part of our quadratic formula. So after we find the discriminant, determining how many solutions of what kind we have. When we plug everything else into the quadratic formula, we're just going to use that discriminant value under the square root. We're not going to do any extra work. Okay, so x squared plus 2x plus 2. My a value is 1, my b value is 2, and my c value is also 2. So b squared minus 4ac I get 4 minus 8, which is negative 4, which means I have two imaginary solutions. All right, perfect. Now I'm going to plug the rest of my stuff into the quadratic formula. A different color here. So the quadratic formula, x equals, so I'm just going to plug a, b, and c into this thing. So I have a negative b. Well, my b value is 2, so it's negative 2. Then I have plus or minus, that's always going to be the case. The square root of b squared minus 4ac. Now I'm not going to do that math again. I know that that is just negative 4 because I already did that math. Not only did that tell me the number and type of solutions, but it also kind of shortcutted all this math I'm going to do here. And that's all over 2 times a, which is just 2 times 1, which is just 2. So now I'm just going to simplify this as far as I possibly can. Negative 2 plus or minus square root of negative 4. Now I'm going to do that kind of off to the side here. This has thrown us back to that simplifying radicals in target 1. So what I'm going to do is break this up into the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 4. That was always our first step. I know the square root of negative 1 is i, and then the square root of 4 is actually just 2. So the way I'm going to write that is 2i. So I'm going to transfer that back up here. Plus or minus, instead of the square root of negative 4, I have 2i all over 2. 
Now, if you get to a step like this and you see that all three of these values can be simplified, they're all two, so I can divide all of them by two, I'm going to do that. When I divide all of them by two, this becomes one, this becomes one, and this also becomes one. So what I have is negative one plus or minus one i, or just i, all over one, or you can just leave it as that. So kind of going back, what was I predicting here? Well, I predicted that I was going to have two imaginary solutions, and I do. I have negative one plus i and negative one minus i. That's what that plus and minus means. That just means that I have two solutions. Because I have i in my answer, my answers are imaginary, so it's all worked out. All right, let's try another one. x squared minus 6x plus 9. My a value is 1, b value is negative 6, and c is 9. So b squared minus 4ac. Thirty-six minus thirty-six, which is zero, which means I have one real solution. All right. Now, going back to my quadratic formula, I'm going to do all that next. So x equals negative b. Now, my b value is already negative six, so taking the negative version of that just makes it positive plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, and I already did that, I got 0, all over 2a. 2 times a just gives me 2, because my a value is 1. Now, don't overthink this. The square root of 0 is just 0. The square root of 1 is just 1, so whenever you see a 1 or a 0 under the square root, don't overthink it. It's always just 1 or 0 simpler than you think. So instead of writing the square root of 0, I'm just going to write 0. So 6 plus or minus 0 all over 2. Now if I take 6 and I add 0, I'm just going to get 6. Can I take 6 and I subtract 0? I'm also just going to get 6. This is actually just one answer, 6 over 2. That can actually be reduced to 3. So you can see that I only got one solution, and it was a real number, which means all that checked out, and I ended up doing the right thing. All right, let's do another one. x squared minus 6x plus 10. My a value, b value, and c value. a is 1, b is negative 6, and c is 10. So b squared minus 4ac gives me 36 minus 40, which is negative 4, which means I have two imaginary solutions. All right, let's do the quadratic formula now. equals negative b. Now we already did one like this. My b value is already negative, so my negative b actually makes it positive. Plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, which is just negative 4, all over 2a. 2 times a is just 2 times 1, which is just 2. Now if you look back in the first one we did earlier, I already did the square root of negative 4 and I got 2i, so I'm not going to do all that work again. I know that the square root of negative 4 reduces down to 2i. So I now have 6 plus or minus 2i all over 2. And just like in the first one, I can actually simplify this a little bit farther. So because this, this, and this, all three of those numbers can be divided by 2, I'm going to do that. I get 3, 1, and 1. That's going to be my answer. I have 3 plus or minus 1i, or you can just write i, all over 1, or you can just leave it as that. So yes, I did get two answers, and they were both imaginary, 3 plus i and 3 minus i. 
Alright, and the last one, x squared minus 5x plus 5. A is 1, B is negative 5, and C is positive 5. So, B squared minus 4 times A times C. 25 minus 20 gives me 5, which is a positive number, which means I get two real solutions. quadratic formula now. x equals negative b, which is just positive 5, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, which is just 5, all over 2 times a, which is just 2. Now, the square root of 5 cannot be broken down into any other factors besides 1 and 5. No, it cannot. This is fully simplified as far as it's going to go, which means in my answer, I'm just going to leave it as 5 plus or minus root 5 over 2, which means my first answer is 5 plus root 5 over 2, and then my other answer is 5 minus root 5 over 2. Those are my two answers. Now, in the previous problems, I had numbers that I could simplify, but in this case, there's technically a 1 here and a 1 here. And 5, 1, and 2 cannot be divided by anything commonly, so there's no other simplifications that I could do here. That's as simplified as it's going to get. So, that's the answer. And that's targets 3 and 4.